I've a like-hate relationship with this game. If you want to know my overall impression immediately before I get into details, I think Into the Radius is a potentially excellent premise with great innovative ideas for VR, built on a very low quality foundation. In its current state, I do not recommend it, nor do I have confidence that the extremely flawed execution will be properly addressed based upon the developer's track record so far. That being said, if you have a high tolerance for, and you can see past very buggy, unstable core mechanics and overall poor game performance causing you stutters and frame skips constantly, then listen for a while longer and then make up your mind. If your instinct still compels you to want to play it after I'm done, Definitely trust your inner voice over me. It's okay. They're only my feelings. They will heal. Eventually. I'm in a bit of a pickle here because how one chooses their ordering of words can be very powerful in altering your lasting impression. There are some clear areas of praise and some clear areas of severe damnation for this game. Do I give you the positive impressions before or after the negative? Will hearing one before the other make those impressions stand out more to you and cement your conclusion, or influence more in a particular direction? Why haven't I started the damn review yet? Well, I don't know which would be fairest or truer, because we all may have different results regardless, so it's impossible for me to account for this. But by bringing this little matter of influence to your attention, at the very least, that extra nugget of self-awareness can allow you to walk away less influenced with a conclusion more true to you. You're welcome. The good. I'll start with what the game does well first. The world and setting is quite immersive and interesting. It borrows heavily from the Stalker series of games, a kind of Soviet-era Russia vibe, in a mysterious exclusion zone created by a big ominous floating ball, where reality itself is unstable. It's harsh, deadly, unforgiving, all that stuff, with dangerous anomalies everywhere and strange alien-like shadow creatures that wish to do you harm. It is a compelling scene, fitting for the survival adventure genre it sets out to be. It can be a very intricate game in how it allows you, the player, to express yourself in detail while navigating through this hostile zone. You're taught how to play and interact, but are told nothing of what's happening around you, who you are, or why you're here, pulling you into the mystery of it all. Items have durability, guns can jam, melee weapons wear down and break, you need to eat to sustain your stamina, items and equipment must be scavenged and considered carefully, individual bullets of differing types can be stored and loaded or unloaded from your magazines and boxes. Weapons can be physically cleaned by yourself using WD-40 and a toothbrush, and then a ramrod with toilet paper. Your inventory backpack and pocket are fully dynamic and your item placement persists precisely in them and in the world, allowing you to gradually begin placing, stockpiling and maintaining your things when and where you see fit. It's very atmospheric. The game does a fantastic job of creating a sense of individual presence with the freedom it gives you, and really lends well to the survivor, scavenger feeling that coalesces into an experience in which you feel a strong sense of place in the world, and thus becomes incredibly immersive. The immersive element is only further enhanced by it being in VR, and Into the Radius makes nice little innovations here too. Enabling interactions with some game mechanics that, on a 2D screen, would be impossible or otherwise very unintuitive to perform, by turning them into very natural, intuitive and engaging actions that leverages full-body 3D input. The aforementioned weapon cleaning with a toothbrush and spray, imagine doing this on a 2D screen. Dragging your mouse or thumbstick up and down or side to side to simulate the brushing, it would be tedious and dull, and isn't done on flat-screen games with usual inputs for good reason. Have it be done by your own body movements in a natural way, however, it becomes highly immersive and personal, and connects you with the world all the more. As mentioned just before, backpack storage is now truly dynamic, with your items able to be placed precisely where and how you choose, the only limit being the total weight. 
It allows an unprecedented level of personalization and expression no longer limited by abstract grids and slots. Both of these innovations take great advantage of the new dimensions VR offers, and I commend the devs for seeing the meaningful impact of these interactions and taking efforts to implement them. While these two innovations are by no means mechanical revolutions compared to what we can already do on a screen, they make much more sense in VR and are the stepping stones toward us thinking about input in 3D rather than 2D, which will lead to many more substantial innovations that shall, one day, change gaming forever. The little details make an enormous difference. This is seemingly lost wisdom that we need to start remembering the importance of once again. And speaking of the little details, this is, unfortunately, where Into the Radius completely fails to close the deal of what it is trying to sell. The jank. Shotgun. Can't see us needing much else. See, just there. I did not release my fingers one bit at all. I swear. And I was even force gripping them a little bit hard there, just to be sure, and it still slipped out of my hand. So I'm always fighting with these things. For a sense of realism and immersion to succeed, the little details must be given proper attention, much more so than they normally would. It must make sense in the context. They must be believable. When you set the standard, as this world does, little errors and unstable behavior become magnified and quickly destroy your sense of presence. The game that asks you to take it seriously needs to take itself seriously, too. Almost every single interaction you have with Into the Radius feels very unstable and severely lacks polish. It feels like the game is always but a hair's breadth away from falling apart at any moment if you dare do anything too suddenly. The physics and collisions are constantly glitchy and jarring. Items launch themselves across the room because you dare pick something up nearby. Items frequently fall through terrain when dropped, especially upon death. Your controller movements do not update correctly at higher frame rates. Held items would randomly drop from my hands despite my real grip not loosening. Although this might be an issue unique to index controllers, I'm not sure. But it rarely happened with other games, so I'm inclined toward there being some kind of funky programming in this one. The game's performance is awful. It coughs and splutters its way through each scene, stuttering and dropping frames frequently. It can barely keep up with itself, let alone with you as a player messing around with it. The AI is poor, which has been true for most games in the last 15 years, mind you. Excluding the spawn, the enemies behave like basic AI programmed robots, especially the mimics in the later game. I can't stress this enough. The jank is constant. Once you get over one thing, another is always around the corner. Always little things, but they compound together. And there are so many of them. Where the... Where's my Mosin gone? My Mosin has just vanished. <laughs> it's just vanished, I bet you. I bet you it collided with the AK and probably flew up into the air. All this jank on top of the bad performance is devastating to the overall experience the game seeks to achieve. Each moment that I'd begin to feel absorbed in the world and gameplay, the game would be guaranteed to have some kind of jank interaction to pull me out of it again very soon. This ever-pervasive jank has been around in the game for a very long time, so I can deduce the devs are happy enough with this state, or the programmers don't know how to make it better. What?! What the hell?!
Many updates have passed since release, as usual with games in the present moment, and despite the apparent bug fixing and additions, the game feels as fragile as ever. As of writing, the latest beta update continues this trend, adding, of all things, a playable guitar, miscellaneous stuff, and more notably an upscaling method to the graphics options to try and help with the performance issues. The latter of which basically being an admittance of the developers holding up their hands and saying they don't know how to optimize and are relying on third-party upscaling to save their asses. Upscaling software is interesting and can be effective depending on the implementation, but it's a rich-get-richer, poor-get-poorer solution, only good for those who already have higher-end PCs that can run at big resolutions which look decent when they are upscaled. Those who would already suffer the most from the game's bad coding, the mid-to-lower range PCs, get a severely blurrier and compromised image in exchange for possible improvements. Upscaling is the modern solution of pawning the responsibility onto users instead. It's disrespectful and a big middle finger to us, in my opinion. Optimization is a developer responsibility. They lack the skill or the will to do it. That's all there is to it. I'll admit, I'm being particularly harsh on the game. And with the current review score on Steam of very positive, bordering on overwhelmingly positive, might imply that my feelings about this are in the minority, so you may not resonate with me here. That's okay, we all have differing tolerances as I said before. PC VR players, myself included, have been starving for an actual game with depth and substance to get absorbed into that also takes advantage of VR. I think this game gets a free pass from players because it is one of the scant few VR titles that attempts to be a full-on, multi-layered game and not a brief tech demo experience or cheap asset flip like most others seem to be. I was exactly that way also when I first played this game. I had patience when I was live streaming my experience with Into the Radius. But as the hours wore on, my ability to overlook the constant compromising jank wore away with it. You might even say the reason my attitude is so critical and sharp is because it's clear to me how the game could realize its intent if it were helmed by a team who understood where and how to focus care and consideration. So close yet so far is a saying that comes to mind. It's very frustrating. Conclusion Into the Radius does a wonderful job setting its atmosphere. It's compelling and interesting when first embarking into the world, but it all falls apart when you attempt serious interaction with that world. The developers have shown no evidence that they possess the insight and understanding of how the little details matter the most when it comes to immersion and believability, which is without question what they're trying to achieve with this game. It's a bittersweet experience because the presentation and theme is interesting enough that you can see immediately how great it would be if the game were more fundamentally stable. During my later playthrough attempts, I was frequently lamenting how much of a landmark this game could be if given to a more competent team who understood better what they were doing. All this being said, Appreciation and praise is deserved for the efforts made to innovate with VR, which few other games even comprehend doing. While ultimately not enjoyable for me, Into the Radius is an interesting experience at the very least. Despite its failings, there is nothing else in VR presently that attempts the niche it does, so it gets that pass by default. It is simultaneously a glimpse of the greatness VR can achieve when input innovation is attempted, and some of the worst that VR can offer when not enough care is given to the basic input functionality, and how that can destroy an otherwise great premise.